Well, it's a nice cold winter day here on Wall Street. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> Whoa. It is a cold one today. Reminds me of the many days I was out here in the cold doing tours the week before Christmas with all of the Christmas decorations and bells ringing and everyone excited for the holidays. And um, so it's quite different today. It's pretty uh, quiet here, as you can imagine, but I'm enjoying it. I'm at the corner of Pearl and Wall Street, as you can see. And I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes for some more people to join us. If you'd like to, uh, make sure to say hi so I know you're there. And also, if you have anything special you'd like me to talk about here on Wall Street today, um, put it in the comments so I will know. And as you can see, it's quite quiet around here today. Nothing happening. A little dark and gloomy and quiet. So I'm going to walk out here a little bit further. And this is Wall Street, but first we're going to talk about Pearl Street. So here we're on a street called Pearl Street, the intersection of Wall Street here. And let's see, in that way is Brooklyn. And we're eventually going to be walking up in that direction, up Wall Street to Trinity Church. So it's a pretty short walk, but we have a lot to see in our walk today. Now, the first thing I would like you to do is while we're standing in this spot here, I'm going to move over a little bit. I would like you to imagine that instead of these heating grates in front of us, you're seeing the shore of the East River. And this is just the shore. And maybe my, my booted feet here, maybe my feet are standing in just a little bit of water. And you might see some um, boats docked right along here as well. And this would have been the original shore of Manhattan Island when those Dutch settlers arrived in the early 1600s. And they called this Pearl Street because right along here where you see the water or the water line was, were oyster beds. So there was um, full of oyster beds and they named the street, they said, for the shells that glistened like pearls in the sun. So this became Pearl Street. And obviously there's been a lot of landfill since then and we're going to talk about that. So imagine this is the shore and in front of us we have a little bit of a dirt road going straight ahead. And off here to the right, another little dirt road, which is called Beaver Street. And Beaver Street, interestingly, is named for the beaver trade that made New Amsterdam, that little Dutch village, so wealthy and profitable and desirable. And I'm going to walk over here a little bit. We are going to come back here. But I just want to show you up there on this building at Pearl and Beaver Street that there are little beaver heads all around the building in those emblems. So the building uh, represents Beaver Street and the beaver trade. So here we are on Old Pearl Street, so the old shore. And we are going to walk out in this direction. If you were looking north this way in front of us, we would see just a big wooden wall here, a wooden wall or what they would call a palisade. And that is the wall for which Wall Street got its name. And right there at the intersection I'm pointing at, the camera's pointing at, was an archway in the wall. And you see on that beautiful building an archway representing the old arch in the wooden wall. So on the other side of the wall was rural farmland. And on this side of the wall was the little Dutch village of New Amsterdam. So the wall was simply placed there to protect the little village. And we're going to head out this way. Now, eventually, the English would take the colony from the Dutch in 1664, rename it New York, and tear down the wall. And eventually, the English decided the town needed to be enlarged. There just simply wasn't enough commercial space on that little tiny triangle down here. And I'm walking now on the distance of that original landfill. So that landfill began in 1685. The Common Council voted to do it and it went out to the next block, Water Street. So I'm walking along that landfill. So imagine this is the length of the landfill over to the other side of water where I'm going to go. It extends to our right all the way to the harbor and almost as far to the left. Oh, I just got hit by a falling piece of ice. Oh, be careful down here. And so we would have filled out to Water Street over there. And when we get the light, I'm going to cross. So that landfill extends all the way down there to that big skyscraper you see in the middle and about equal distance off to our left. That would have been the original landfill from Pearl Street there to here. 
done by manual labor. It took 20 years to build. So for 20 years, people came out and by hand filled this in using ox carts, dirt, and boulders that they brought from north of the town, packed it in, and created more of New York City. And this landfill was finished by about 1709. Now, who paid for it? Uh, New York City didn't have a lot of money at that time, so who would pay for this landfill? Well, everyone who owned waterfront property along here had to pay for their piece of the landfill. They had to construct it themselves. So there was a code enacted that said what you could use to build the landfill, how far out you had to build, and after the landfill was completed, what type of structures would then be um, allowed to be built on it. So that seems like it was a huge investment for the landowners here, but if you think about it, they were acquiring additional land in the most sought after commercial port at that time in North America, New York. So over time, their investment would pay off. And we today might call it a win-win for everyone in saying that the people who built the land got, um, got additional land that they made money on and the town expanded and became more profitable as well. So that was the first stage of the landfill out to where I am now um, from Wall Street where you see that elevator going up there. So that would be our first stage of the landfill. And then in the early 1800s, the next stage of the landfill that goes out to where you see the elevated highway there. So that would be additional landfill later. Now, I'd like you to imagine, as we look up Wall Street here, you can sort of see the steeple of Trinity Church up there. The original width of the island would have gone from Pearl to just behind the steeple of Trinity Church as Trinity was on the land, was on the Hudson River at that time. So it's a very small street. Um, Wall Street mostly is going to be wood, um, dirt in the early years but eventually will be paved with cobblestones so just imagine a cobblestone street running up to trinity church with some small two-story buildings on each side and as we turn out this way where we have this little park would have been a wharf this was one of the most lucrative and important wharfs in all of new york city the one at the base of wall street and until about 1741 the major purpose of this uh wharf um, was as a slave market, and uh, the city has added a marker here about that. New York, of course, engaged in the slave trade as all the colonies did, and this was one of the largest slave markets on the East Coast until about 1741 um, when it was closed. Um, New York made quite a lot of money on the slave trade and clandestinely made quite a lot of money on it even up through the Civil War, um, something New York isn't too fond of talking about today anymore. Um, so here we are at Water Street. I would like you to imagine though that this is a busy dock during the Revolutionary War period. And across there is Brooklyn. <clears throat> and I'd like you to imagine that George Washington's army has just escaped General Howe's advance in Brooklyn. And they are just a little bit to the north of us. And uh, General Howe then invades New York. It's September of 1776 and the battle is called the Battle of Kipps Bay. Now some of you might also know Kipps Bay as an area near Murray Hill. And this dock at that time would have been owned by the Murray family, John and Robert Murray. Um, they were a big ship shipping company. This was their dock. And they lived in the area we today call Murray Hill. And Murray Hill was a magnificent uh, mansion called Eichlenburg. Mrs. Mary Murray, by the way, was the first lady in New York to obtain her own private carriage for her personal service. So very wealthy family. So they own the dock here at, um, at Wall Street. It was called Murray's Wharf. They live up in Murray Hill or Eichlenburg as they called it. And General Howe's army has just crossed into New York to attack General Washington's army. And Mary Murray brilliantly goes out and invites General Howe and the British officers to afternoon tea, delaying them just long enough that Washington's army can make a successful escape up the west side of the island. Now, some people say this story didn't really happen. Other people say, yes, indeed, it did happen. But it's a great idea to think that once, at one time, the port here, um, Murray's Wharf, um, belonged to Lady Mary Murray, who aided George Washington in 1776 and his escape from the British. And of course, as time went by, this area became more and more important to trade and finance here in New York City. Um, New York, up until recently, was a huge commercial port. 
and as this dock area became more and more expensive and more crowded um, this additional landfill was placed here and docks started growing up on the west side of the island as well so let's start our walk up wall street and i remember one day i was doing a tour some time ago for a very nice family and we got here to wall street and uh a young son in the family maybe he was about 10 years old um, gazed up the full maybe five blocks of wall street looked up at his dad and said is this it this is all it is <laughs> he was so disappointed because wall street is a tiny street but it's more an idea isn't it it's more an idea that encompasses um, financial success and global dominance and um and uh drive power and all of those things so we can see wall street is a pretty small street walking up here um, but we find some things on wall street that actually tell us the story of the development not only of wall street but of new york city and of new york city's financial background too so let's start our walk and we're going to come back up here from pearl street hello to indiana are you as cold in indiana as i am here in new york <laughs> It is quite cold today. We're coming, ooh! There's all kinds of stuff falling off of this building I'm passing. Just put my hood up. So we're coming back up to Pearl. Now during the time that um, the British controlled New York, they called this street Queen Street. Um, but before it was Queen Street, right up there on Pearl, you can see a bit of a Hello from Tucson. It is cold. Look, here's the snow. <laughs> we didn't get that much. Um, if you look in that direction, I'm going to enlarge this. You can see where that guy is riding his bike. You can see a United truck. And just about where that United truck was in the 1600s was the home of William Kidd, a man that you will all know as Captain Kidd, um, the infamous pirate. So his home was right down here on Pearl Street. And I pointed out before the beaver heads on this building indicating our success in the beaver trade some people call this the beaver building but it's not if any of you are john wick fans let me walk around to the front of the building you might recognize this building as the hotel where john wick stayed in the three john wick movies or at least the entrance to what was the hotel so this would have been the hotel in the john wick movies and this way is on um, pearl street which takes us down to francis tavern and beaver street and let's take a look at this building on the right and one of the things we see on it are shipping emblems look at this beautiful isn't it and this was the um munson steamship company and they put all sorts of shipping elements on the outside of their building um, it wasn't unusual for buildings in the early 20th century to put items on the outside of the building that told you a little bit about the company that built the building so when Munson, Munson Steamship built their building here, they put the shipping items on it. And if you can see this, I walked by this for many years and didn't realize it was an owl. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There are also owls sitting up there on those flat columns along the building. And it's really quite, quite beautiful. So we have the Munson Steamship Company here. Oh, and the tridents on the lamps. So we get a little bit of an idea of what was going on at that time. And let's come over here and head up Wall Street a little bit more. Trying to be careful because between falling ice and slippery patches. I don't know if anybody watching took a tour with me in the winter, but you might know we have a great time I've done plenty of tours and it's heavy snow and all types of crazy weather. Let's stop over here. We get some historic spots as we look across this way on Pearl Street, which was then Queen Street. Um, we see a new high rise going up there in the middle. And that would have been the original place where the tailor, Hercules Mulligan, had his home and his shop. So you guys who are fans of the Hamilton musical, you know the tailor, Hercules Mulligan. So his home was up there on Queen Street, corner of Queen and Platt Street. And if any of you are fans of the TV show Turn, this Joe and the Juice coffee house 
was the spot where James Rivington had his coffee house, where the spy known as Culper Jr. operated during the Revolutionary War, or Robert Townsend. So that would have been right here on this corner where Robert Townsend was spying on all of the British officers hanging out in the coffee house. So we have some great history along here. Oh, and by the way, if you can see it, up the street here is beautiful Delmonico's restaurant. You can see it there. It's that brownstone building. And that is lovely Delmonico's restaurant, still here after all these years, the oldest operating restaurant in America from 1824. Your grandmother was born on Pearl Street in 1919. Wow! Well, somewhere along here, probably closer to the Brooklyn Bridge maybe, depending on your grandmother's nationality. And let's see what we find next. So come around the corner. And we have the building with the arch in it. And you might see that the arch contains these beautiful maritime symbols, beautiful masonry, stonework on this building. Look at the symbols here. Just lovely stuff. Um, some more ships and some more medallions with maritime symbols. So this was the first Siemens Bank um, built here in 1921. It's also made of a uh, beautiful stone and uh, has been empty for many, many years. This also would have been the site of something called the Tontine Coffee House, where after the American Revolution, the um, gentlemen who uh, traded in financial instruments used to spend their time. And it's also where Alexander Hamilton started the Bank of New York. Oh, your family was Italian. Oh, yes, yeah, so it would have been Pearl Street in that direction that we're facing um, up closer to um, the Brooklyn Bridge. So we have from 1921, the Siemens Bank, very beautiful. And let's head up some more and see what we can find. Of course, I just mentioned a name that we're gonna be talking about quite a lot because there are quite a few things on Wall Street connected to Mr. Hamilton that we'll be looking at. <laughs> and here we go, the, the snow is already getting brown and black and yucky. We have a food truck out. Let's walk up a little bit here. And you can tell we're walking uphill. I don't know if you can tell, I can tell. And you can see Trinity Church quite a bit better now in the distance. Trinity Church was originally on the Hudson River, so everything beyond Trinity Church doesn't exist until about the 20th century. So it was a very tiny street. Well, still is a very tiny street. We just want to come up here a little bit to Hanover Street. And I think I've mentioned on my other tours, if you've seen them, that the black street signs indicate we're on original colonial streets. So there's Hanover Street. These are the original streets laid out before the American Revolution. And we're going to want to stop here. Let me stop over here. I don't want to be in anyone's way. And let's look up. And we see a couple of soldiers, a couple of heads up there. And that is 20 Exchange Place, originally built as the Farmers Loan and Trust Company. And that big tower up there is the top of it. I think it is still the tallest stone face building in America. And those soldiers, there are 14 of them around the building. And they're each alternately smiling and frowning, representing the booms and busts of uh, Wall Street. And the building was built in 1930. So one of our early skyscrapers over there with those brilliant heads on it. And, oh, and the, the flags. I wonder, do you know the significance of everyone hanging a flag in the Wall Street area that uh, designates their company name? And of course, all these flags used to all be banks at one time, they aren't anymore. Um, that also dates from the Revolutionary War period, the colonial period, where um, people had little um, flags in front of their shops that signified their shop was there. Um, they said they didn't really like the uh, old British style of using a wooden plaque. So in New York, they began hanging colorful flags from their shops 
to identify their shops to people who were walking around. And that um, tradition still remains here today. And of course, at one time, this would have been all uh, banking flags that were out here. And this is uh, I used to be Deutsche Bank. I don't know if this building is still Deutsche Bank. Hello to Austria. Thank you for joining me today on our look at Wall Street. All right, so we're going to come up here and we're going to talk about this big building, this bluish granite building. 55 walk. And you can see it's quite an impressive structure. This was built, or I should say it was completed in 1842. I think it took about six years to build because it was such a monumental um, structure to build. I just want to come over to the front so you can see this beautiful entrance. This is a beautiful entrance of 55 wall and I'm going to try to cross the street here so that you can get a better look at it from across the street so give me a moment here it's a little tricky getting across and here we are 55 water beautiful building um, we really just want to talk about the bottom of the building, the original building that was built as a mercantile exchange. And that beautiful granite that you see is called cyanite. Um, the cyanite comes from only one quarry in America, in Massachusetts, and it has a bluish color, the cyan tint. And if you look at those huge blocks that the numbers are on, as well as the columns, you can see that they are single pieces of granite carved at the quarry and shipped here to be assembled onto the building. It was a magnificent architectural achievement. By the mid-1900s, New York has turned our architectural eye toward Europe, and you see a lot of buildings like this built in the Neo-Greek style, and some in the Neo-Roman style as well. And this is incredible. It is an entire city block, cost a fortune to build, and was quite magnificent. The second top, second half where the top part was put on in 1905 by the um, um, Citibank who used to own it and that's kind of ugly so we'll just kind of look at the base of the building because it was quite beautiful. This is the second oldest building that remains on Wall Street. We'll be um, walking by the uh, oldest in a few minutes. Oh hi to Auburn, New York. Um, did you get a lot of snow? Staten Island? Ah. Staten Island, I was going to ride the ferry today, but I thought it would be too cold, so I decided to walk along Wall Street instead. Um, but I am going to do a, um, a little Staten Island ferry tour and talk about the history of New York Harbor, but when the weather's a little more conducive to that, I think. There's a nice American flag up there, and there we have the Cipriani flag. They own this structure now, so that history of hanging your corporate flag on your building on Wall Street is still in effect and number 55 the old mercantile exchange it is a landmark building now you also notice there's a 53 and there's a 57 right over there and some of you might remember that number 57 is where the lawyer alexander hamilton had his home and his and his office for a time so for a time this would have been the um office of lawyer alexander hamilton when he first moved to new york hamilton later moved over to Cedar Street and then he had a town home as his town home and his country home was all the way up in Harlem at the Grange. So we have this beautiful landmark of 55 wall and the inside is just really beautiful. If it was open um, I would go inside for you. Um, one day when the guard is out I'll come down and do a tour of the interior. He's very nice. He lets me in all the time. And let's see, what do we have here? Over here, we're at Wall Street still. We're at 48 Wall Street, and we see it says Bank of New York Building. So let's walk over here a little bit and see what we find on this building. Nice limestone. And we find this interesting marker that says the Bank of New York founded 1784 and you all know who the founder of the Bank of New York was right Mr. Alexander Hamilton and his friend Robert Morris and their friend Captain and then General Alexander McDougall so this was the original site of the Bank of New York and this plaque exists in the wall here's the subway entrance let's walk around because there is a historical marker and the cornerstone 
of their original bank building is still here too, preserved here. So in 1797, they built a proper bank building here, and this is the cornerstone of that building. And down here is um, our New York City landmark plaque on the building. So this is the Bank of New York building. Bank of New York is the oldest bank in America still operating under its original name, incorporated in 1784. And here's a nice plaque about some skyscraper rivalry. Now in a minute I'm going to walk across the street so that you can see the actual top of the building, the Manhattan Company, because you might also know that Hamilton's political rival, Aaron Burr, started a bank as well called the Manhattan Company. And their building still exists here on Wall Street, although the Manhattan Company itself is a part of J.P. Morgan Chase today. And over here. And we're going to look all the way up there to the top of the old Manhattan Trust Company or Manhattan Company building. That was built in 1929 and was the tallest building in the world for just a couple of months until the Chrysler building was completed. Um, but for a very long time, it was the tallest building in Lower Manhattan. And there's a nicer view of Trinity Church. And what else do we have here? I don't want to miss anything. Bank of New York, built in 1926 and is no longer owned by the Bank of New York, but it is landmarked, so the Bank of New York name stays on the front of it. And a view toward Brooklyn. And let's head west a little bit further. And there's the Federal Reserve in the distance. But from here, we can see Delmonico is a little bit better and I'm just going to enlarge this here so that you can see beautiful Delmonico's, the brownstone and terracotta building in the distance. First formal dining experience in America opened in 1824 and still open today. Very beautiful place Delmonico's. Go and there's 55 Qual, Bank of New York. Bank of New York has a lovely top on it, a beautiful eagle, and it looks like they're doing restoration on the eagle. It's a massive eagle on the top of the building. And here we go. Subway. And what do we have? I'm trying to notice. I didn't pass any. Some of the buildings in the area, as you pass them, You'll notice they have Roman and Greek coins on them, and those are banks. And um, they have things like coins and keys and vaults and all types of symbols of money and safety and investment on their buildings. And we have a beautiful building here that was deserted, boarded up for many years, and then bought by Tiffany and Company, who did this incredible restoration that you see restored the entire facade of the building and it is incredible. Um, Delmonico's is on Beaver Street by Hanover Street and Tiffany also did exquisite restoration work inside of the building as well and I'm going to see if you can see some of the ceiling in there how lovely the work is they did and even just here on the sidewalk level. All of this was black, covered with dirt and soot, and in most cases you couldn't even see, you know, how beautiful the stonework is on this building. And as I mentioned, it was boarded up for many years out of use. And Tiffany and Company did this lovely, lovely restoration of it. Added their name up there in gold letters, and there should be a flag. Of course, there's a flag. There we go. And from here, we can also see the Manhattan Trust Company again and how majestic it is. Oops, and I'm just going to leave off the name of the current company that owns the building just because I don't like to have controversy on any of my tours. <laughs> I keep that for my personal life. So I unfortunately am I'm not going to show the name on that building. I found it's a 
unfortunately we're in a time where people begin arguing too easily about things. And let's see. Well, I am going to scoot over here where you see some holes in a facade of a building. And these holes aren't because of the building being unkempt, although there are some holes that are a result, but these holes have been left here for a specific purpose over time. And when we get around to the front of the building, I'll tell you why. And I just noticed that the building across the street, another old bank building, is in the process of being restored and it looks lovely. That also, last time I saw it, was all black and filled with soot and that restoration seems to be going along quite nicely too. So let's go around to the front here, these massive limestone blocks, and let's see what this building is and why it still has holes in the side of it. It was a very big, very impressive structure, built in, I think, 1917, maybe, around there, 1915, 1917. And it has no name on it by design. And there used to be a plaque here on the sidewalk telling you what it was, but I see that's been removed as well. So. If you don't know, you would never know that this building was built by J.P. Morgan, that this is the original Morgan building. And I'm just going to cross the street here so you can see it better. And I'm going to turn around here and get a better view of the old J.P. Morgan building. Now there's no name on the building because Morgan himself said the building would never need a name as everyone would always know it was the huge house of Morgan, the powerful and important house of Morgan. Now in 1920, there was a terrorist attempt to destroy the house of Morgan and that's what those holes are in the side of the building. And I'm just going to face the Wall Street Christmas tree here while I talk. And um, 1920, anarchists pulled up a cart full of dynamite next to the Morgan building and blew it up at lunchtime. They, um, they injured hundreds of people. They said the explosion was so big that the head of the horse that pulled the cart flew all the way to Trinity Church. And uh, the Morgan family kept the holes in the building, they said, to show the feeble attempt at the um, failed destruction of the magnificent house of Morgan. So the building still exists today with the holes in the side. I do not know who owns it. It's passed through many hands over the years. Um, it looks like they might be finally doing some restoration on it, although the way conditions are, I'm not really sure, but this would have been the old house of Morgan. This replaced the building that Morgan had built here in the 1880s. So there was a previous house of Morgan as well. And of course, right across from the house of Morgan, we have the New York Stock Exchange. Stock Exchange has been in this building since 1905, but they started in 1791, right down there where we started our tour at Pearl and Wall Street. So they're an old um, institution. They have lots of traditions, and one of their traditions is the Wall Street Christmas tree. You can see the tree is all lit up. And in front of the tree, I don't know if you can see it, you can see it, um, is a lighted menorah. And that's an old New York City tradition to have a Christmas tree and a menorah lit up together for the holiday season. And so here we have the New York Stock Exchange as well. Yes, your National Park Service. I am a volunteer at this branch of the National Park Service, Federal Hall National Memorial where I appear here when they're open as my 18th century reenactment character, Mrs. Q. So um, we're all sad that they've been closed and we haven't been able to work and come out and teach the tourists and people of New York about our nation's great history. But there is Washington, he's covered in snow and the statue commemorates Washington's inauguration in 1789, which occurred right where he's standing. Now this is not the building that was here at that time. That building was torn down. This was built in 1841 and this is the oldest intact structure on Wall Street. The um, 
old Federal Hall National Memorial. This was originally built as a customs house and later became a part of the Federal Park Service. It's a very beautiful place to visit and when they open I recommend it and I especially recommend it when I'm there working as Mrs. Q and you can come in and talk to me about what it was like to be alive when President Washington was inaugurated here on Wall Street and what that occasion was all about. Hopefully we'll be back soon. Up here you can see I think the top of the Manhattan Trust Company. You can see the spire up there, the green spire. Right from this spot here. Oh yeah, this is a great building. They've been doing restoration on the dome of this building since spring, but I have not been inside to see how the progress is going. All of us reenactors are missing it very much. We just missed evacuation day, we missed July 4th, we missed Washington's inauguration, and we missed, um, you know, many events where we usually come to reenact, and I volunteer one day a week in costume as well. So there's our view of Wall Street where we started. And we're already just about at the end. Here is Trinity Church. And let's head up to Trinity Church. These cobblestones that you see here are not originals. These were placed here after this was turned into a pedestrian plot. Oops, sorry, I lost you for a moment. My cell service went out, but I see we're back now. There we are looking north. And here we go. This is the side of the New York Stock Exchange. There's been an exchange in New York since the time of New Amsterdam. And our own New York Stock Exchange, of course, started in 1791. Yeah, the, yeah, Ellen, the, um, the uh, plaque that talks about the, the wall is covered with ice and snow. And I think the wood has actually already worn away in the little mount that it was in. I think the wood is all gone now, too. And this building that's under restoration, Number One Broadway, is another gorgeous building from that early skyscraper era built in 1930, the old Irving Trust building. Let's see if we can see the entrance. I'm going to stop right about here. It doesn't look so great because everything is covered up. But you can see some of the entrance there. <clears throat> now, when they built this skyscraper in 1930, number one Broadway, they were very, very concerned about being accepted by the public and the neighborhood as there were so many skyscrapers being built people were starting to become skeptical of them and um, they did a whole PR campaign on this building and one of the things they did was they designed the ground floor windows even though they're art deco to fit in with the design of Trinity Church so that it would fit in with the aesthetic of Trinity Church, which at that time was the most important building in the neighborhood. So you can see the windows have an Art Deco interpretation of the Gothic Revivalist windows across the street of Trinity Church. And Trinity, of course, looks beautiful today. Oh, they have their manger scene out. Let's go take a look. They usually have that on display inside of St. Paul's Chapel, but since the churches are closed, it looks like they have it on display at the entrance instead. And you see all the greenery they have out. It looks so beautiful, covered in the snow. This is the third Trinity Church. It was built in 1846. The first was built in 16, 1697, I think. Then the second around 1800. And this is the third. And I think you can probably hear the bells ringing. Quite beautiful. And I'm going to cross when it's safe. Okay. Wow. And everything looks really, really beautiful. Thank you.
So this is the entrance to the church, and these doors, these doors were a gift from the Astor family, and they were added onto the church later. They're bronze, they're carved, and they illustrate different verses from the Bible. And you can see they put out their nativity scene here at the entrance, and it looks really, really beautiful. So this is a great culmination of our walk here, seeing this beautiful nativity scene here and the doors which have recently been restored. Normally when we walk through St. Paul's Chapel we'll see this in St. Paul's. Let's see, well, you can see the greenery here. And it might be cold and snowy but maybe this is all worth it to see the beautiful snow all around Trinity Church and the beautiful view of the church today. I'm just going to move over here a little bit so that you can see it all a little bit better. And you can see the church. Quite, quite beautiful. Now let's see if we can see a little bit into the graveyard while we are up here. Here we go. The graveyard looks quite cold and desolate. And over there on the left, you can see what looks like an enclosure over a big grave, and that is Mr. Hamilton's grave and his wife, um, Eliza Schuyler Hamilton. It looks like they're doing restoration again on his grave site, so that's covered up. But you can see the deep snow and some of the gravestones that are sticking out above it, and some snow on the statues of Trinity Church. And it really does look quite beautiful. and one Wall Street. And here's the rest of that Art Deco building built by Irving Trust Company in 1930, also under restoration. And that was our whole walk of Wall Street. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go back and take a bunch of pictures and I will post the pictures later. Thanks so much for joining me. My hands are freezing, um, but I had a good time seeing everyone. So thank you all for joining me. And if it's a little warmer, maybe next Friday, um, I will do the Staten Island Ferry. If not, ah, oh, your grandmother worked for Irving Trust. Irving Trust was a wonderful company. They were here until the late 1980s when they were taken over by the Bank of New York. So thank you guys for joining me. I'm gonna go put my gloves on and take some pictures and head back to my Patriot Tours office. Um, everyone have a wonderful Christmas and um, I'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.